Hello viewers, welcome to this video. As promised in the last video, I've updated my Vagrant environment to use Ubuntu 2004 with container D as the runtime and no Docker at all. Okay, first let me clone my GitHub repository and then I'll walk you through what the changes I have done. Git clone Kubernetes, I'll put a link to my GitHub repository in the video description if you want it. CD to Kubernetes and then to Vagrant provisioning. Let me open this up in uh, Visual Studio Code. All right, so that's the GitHub repository and under Vagrant provisioning, you used to see a lot of files. So I had one file for Flannel, one file for Calico overlay network. So I've removed everything. So now all I've got is a very simple Vagrant file, a bootstrap script that runs on both master node and the worker nodes and a custom bootstrap script specific for master and worker. So let's go through the Vagrant file first. I'm using Ubuntu 2004. I'm not using CentOS 7. CentOS 7 is ancient. I'm planning to use CentOS 8, but I'm going to stick with the Ubuntu 2004 and I'm fixing the Vagrant box to version 3.1.12 that's the latest Vagrant box for this Vagrant box. Everything else is the same again as you know it works with VirtualBox as well as libvirt KVM. I personally use KVM libvirt because I'm on a Linux machine so I can use kernel based virtualization uh, but I know most of you guys use VirtualBox so I'm going to use VirtualBox for this demo but otherwise everything is going to work and similarly here the same uh, Vagrant box Ubuntu from both master nodes and worker nodes and the same box version and everything is the same and now let's go to the bootstrap script bootstrap k master it's just uh, does a cube ADM initialization copies the configuration file and then kworker when it runs this bootstrap script it copies the, uh, the cluster join command and then it just runs it and becomes part of the cluster so the, there's no change to kworker and kmaster but in the bootstrap script if you see here the thing that I've changed is you can see that I'm loading a couple of kernel modules which is required for container D and instead of installing docker I'm now installing the container D runtime here and the Kubernetes version that I'm fixing is 1.20.0 so I don't want to leave this version because if I leave it depending on when you're running this vagrant environment you would always get the latest version of kubeady kubelet and kubectl which I haven't actually tested so I know this particular setup works so I want to fix this version to 1.20 but feel free to change this version or feel free to just remove the version so that you would get whatever the latest at the time you are running this vagrant up command okay so now let's go ahead and bring this up vagrant up and it's going to take uh, five to six minutes and I'll pause the video and come back when it's done all right the command completed it took about seven minutes and four seconds okay so our cluster is up and running so the first thing we need to do is copy the kubernetes configuration file from the master node so before that i need to make the dot cube directory so make the under my home directory dot cube and now i'm going to run an scp command root at 172.16.16.100 which is the ip address of my master machine and I'm copying etc kubernetes admin.conf to dot cube as config and the password is cube admin okay so that's copied and I can do kubectl cluster info and there we go so that's our cluster that's running fine kubectl get nodes minus o wide so you can see we've got three nodes one master and two worker nodes all of them are running Ubuntu 2004 and the important thing here is the container runtime you can see it's container d version 1.3.3 so our cluster is up and running let's see what's inside the cube system namespace cube cdl minus n cube system get all okay so all of them are running we've got calico on each of the nodes because it's a daemon set and we have cube dns for dns it's cd scheduler api server control manager so everything is healthy all of them are running fine so what i wanted to test is uh, because I've got two worker nodes, I'm going to launch two different containers. I wanted to see whether the container on one worker node can talk to the container on the other node. If it worked, then our Calico OLA network worked fine. No issues with Calico. So let me open up another terminal and also another one. So in here, I'm going to run kubectl run. I'm just spinning up an Alpine image, uh, minus minus RM. So once I exit out of this container, it's going to kill the container. Minus IT for interactive mode, and I'm using the Alpine image. So that's the name of the part that I'm going to launch, and I'm going to launch a shell into that container. Okay, so on the top end here, I'm going to watch kubectl get pods minus O. Why at the moment we don't have any pod? 
Okay, so let's run this here and you can see the container is getting created and it's getting created on worker two. Okay, and let's start another container kubectl run and this time let's give it a name alpine2 because we can't have two parts with the same name and i'm opening up a shell so we will have another container created and this one is on kworker1 we've got logged into both of these containers and if i do hostname dash i so that's 192.168.77.129 hostname dash i 41.129 okay so they both are definitely on different networks you can see here 192.168.77.129 which is this one 41.129 which is this one running on two different nodes so i should be able to ping this ip address from this container yeah that's working fine and i'm going to ping this container from this container and that's also working fine which means our calico network is working okay so basically we've got a cluster using my vagrant environment with the 1 to 204 and container d as a runtime we can launch containers and we can and we verify that our calico overlay networking is also working fine all right so let me exit out of this container these two containers and they will get terminated i just want to show you one more thing so now i'm going to log into one of the worker node or even my Master node doesn't matter. I just want to show you without Docker, we've only got container D runtime. So, how would you list the containers? How do you look at the information about a container and so on? So, if you've got Docker installed, you basically do Docker PS, Docker info, Docker exec into a particular container and so on. So, without Docker, uh, with container D running, and how would you look at the details about your container environment? Okay, so on the top end, let's log into our worker node SSH root at 172.16.16.101 cube admin is the password okay so we are in here so the command we are going to be using is usually we will do docker ps but we won't have because we, uh, we don't have docker installed which docker we don't have docker installed so the command to use here is called ctr and there's a help uh, documentation for that ctr minus hatch and you can see the list of things that you can do ctr containers list ctr images namespaces snapshots and all those things if you want to see more help about a particular command you can just do ctr containers with the ctr containers you've got some list of subcommands container you can create a container delete info ls so basically docker ps so that's what you will get from uh, the list or ls command but before using this you won't be able to see the containers let me show you ctr containers list or containers ls or container list ls or just you can use the short form ctr c ls list so there are a bunch of options that you can use so let me show you ctr containers list ctr containers list at the moment it doesn't show any container but that's not strictly true because we definitely know that there are lots of containers running on these three machines but it's showing an empty list because container d is namespaced so there are multiple namespaces and containers get gets launched in a namespace so we can do ctr namespace list our ctr ens list let's do ctr namespaces list so you can see here we've got one namespace k8s.io so we need to be using that so similar to how we use kubectl minus n cube system get all so we need to specify the namespace when you're working with ctr so ctr minus minus namespace k8s.io containers list and there we go so now you can see the list of containers here okay ctr namespace kts.io containers list and those are the list of containers that we are running to look into details about a particular container you can use the uh, image option sorry the info option ctr containers and there is this info option get into get info about a container ctr containers info minus hash and there we go so ctr containers info and the container id that's it so that's all i wanted to show you in this video i haven't tested this vagrant environment extensively so just yesterday i had a chance to do this update but uh, give it a try if you if you come across any issues with this vagrant environment please let me know hopefully you enjoyed this video i will see you all in my next video until then keep learning and keep on learning bye bye